Hi friends, in our last session we have completed vapor compression refrigeration system. In today's session we will study vapor absorption refrigeration system. This is Fezan Kagbi and I welcome you all to our lecture series of basic mechanical engine. So let's begin. Now, as you can see on your screen, the flow diagram for vapor absorption refrigeration system is shown. Uh, can you see a difference in this diagram comparing with PCRA system? We would say yes. The difference is that in place of compressor, we have placed four new devices, right? That is the absorber is placed, pump is placed, then generator and throttle valve. And remaining three components are same, that is evaporator, condenser and expansion device. Okay, so as the name itself suggests that vapor absorption, which means in this system vapor will be absorbed. So which vapor, that is which refrigerant we are going to use, so we would say we are going to use ammonia, that is NH3. Now the question comes in why ammonia is used, so we would say that ammonia has a characteristic, the most important characteristic that is it can easily dissolve in low temperature, low pressure water. That is basically we can say that ammonia has a high solubility in cold water. Okay, whereas as the temperature increases, the solubility of ammonia will reduce. So remember this property, because of this property, ammonia vapor is absorbed. Okay. Now let us begin. So you can see that point number 1 represents the exit of an evaporator that is low pressure, low temperature, vapor refrigerant okay, and inlet to the absorber. Point number 2 represents exit of a generator and inlet to a condenser right? that is representing a high pressure, high temperature vapor refrigerant. Point number 3 represents exit from a condenser and inlet to the expansion device which means high pressure, low temperature, liquid, refrigerant and point number 4 represents the exit of expansion device and inlet to the evaporator that is our low pressure, low temperature, liquid, refrigerant. Now the function of three components we already know that is a function of evaporator that will be placed in a freezing compartment where the, pre, where the cooling effect is required. Okay. So it is going to convert liquid refrigerant into vapor by absorbing a latent heat. Similarly, the function of condenser as we know, condenser will be placed at a surrounding temperature which means at a higher temperature. So the heat transfer will take place from a vapor refrigerant to the surrounding atmosphere. And the function of expansion device is to reduce the high pressure of a refrigerant at the exit of condenser up to a pressure required by evaporator that is a low pressure. So the new term is absorber. Now inside the absorber we are going to place cold water initially when we are going to start our process. Okay, so in an absorber since cold water is placed as soon as the ammonia refrigerant enters into an absorber due to cold water it will be easily dissolved. Okay, it will be absorbed by the cold water because of that a name given is an absorber. Okay, next device is pump. The function of pump we would say is to increase the pressure up to the condenser pressure. Okay, even the pressure is going to be increased in a generator. Whereas a throttle valve function is to reduce the pressure of a weak solution which will flow back from a generator into an absorber. Now, the function of generator. So, generator is not an electric generator. This generator name is given because in this generator, heat energy is supplied to a strong solution of ammonia and because of that as we know the characteristic of ammonia its solubility will decrease with increase in temperature because of that from a strong solution vapor ammonia will be separated okay and that will be entered into a condenser next is the condenser that we have discussed its function okay and a total valve function is to reduce the pressure so let's begin with the working of this system now starting from point number four so point number four condition as you can see it is written low pressure low temperature liquid refrigerant going to enter into evaporator that is going to absorb heat energy from a freezing compartment will get vaporized and at the exit of a evaporator point number one which is a representation of low pressure low temperature vapor refrigerant now this vapor refrigerant which is of a low temperature will enter into absorber as soon as it enters into absorber it will be absorbed by the cold water and 
once it is absorbed can i say that it is going to form a solution of ammonia right in which the content of ammonia is much higher so what we can say if a content of ammonia is higher compared to cold water so we would say it is a strong solution of ammonia okay now that strong solution which is formed in a absorber will be entered into a generator but how we can do that so we would say a pump is used to suck that strong solution from a absorber and with increasing pressure it will supply to the generator once it enters into a generator heat energy will be supplied in the generator because of that its solubility will reduce almost 88% ammonia gets separated in a generator in a remaining solution in which ammonia present is almost around 12% uh, to 10% so we can say that it is now formed a weak solution of ammonia after heating okay now that weak solution will fall back again into an absorber but before falling back into an absorber it is required to reduce its pressure for that we are using a throttle valve after passing through a throttle valve its pressure will be reduced so it is going to enter into a absorber now at an exit of a generator at point number 2 you can see that almost 88% vapor ammonia has been released which is at a high pressure high temperature now it will enter into a condenser in a condenser what is going to happen so heat energy will be rejected that is a heat energy of this ammonia will be rejected to the surrounding atmosphere and finally it will get converted into high pressure low temperature liquid refrigerant remember in a condenser temperature will be reduced because of a heat transfer and latent heat will be rejected okay but pressure is going to remain constant okay now from point 3 enters into expansion device the function is same why we need to pass into expansion device because evaporator requires low pressure ammonia if low pressure is supplied then and then only we can say heat energy will be absorbed in a evaporator so it has been passed into expansion device and after passing into expansion device we get point number four that is our low pressure low temperature liquid refrigerant so now over here our cycle gets completed now again if we see so point number four enters into evaporator again absorbs heat energy and we get point number one now at this time when a vapor ammonia from point one enters into an absorber it will be mixed with a weak solution of ammonia remember that now that weak solution will be at a higher temperature why because the temperature was increased inside a generator right so even inside a absorber we need to supply some cooling system so we are supplying cooling water to cool down weak solution which is fall back into a absorber in order to maintain low temperature of a absorber if low temperature of absorber is not maintained then we would say ammonia will not be absorbed okay so for absorption of ammonia in a absorber it is required that a low temperature has to be maintained inside of absorber this is the most important thing which we need which we need to keep in mind okay from an absorber again we would say a strong solution will be formed which will enter into a generator but how so we would say by means of a pump and again the same cycle is going to be repeated so i hope that you are clear with this technique of refrigeration system that is vapor absorption refrigeration system let's proceed further I have mentioned all the points over here. You can see the main components of ERA system which I have told that is absorber, generator, pump, throttle valve, condenser, expansion device, and evaporator. Even I have mentioned that ammonia is a refrigerant and water is called an absorbent. Okay. Now the working system I have already discussed. So you can see I have written process one to two absorber process in which a low pressure, low temperature. Vapor refrigerant enters into absorber. At the same time, weak solution also transfers into absorber. Due to absorption of ammonia in water, solution becomes strong. Okay. Now the strong solution transfers into a generator where it is heated and ammonia vapor gets separated. As I have told that from a solution and a weak solution again transfers into an absorber at a point number two. Then we form high pressure. High temperature vapor refrigerant that is our exit of a generator. Now our next process is process two to three that is our condenser process. So it in this process we have to mention that high pressure, high temperature vapor refrigerant enters into a condenser. Condenser reject heat energy from a refrigerant and so vapor refrigerant is converted into liquid form at a point number three. There we get 
high pressure, low, low temperature, liquid, reactivity. And the last process is process 3 to 4 is our expansion process, right? In this process, what is happening? So, expansion device reduces the pressure of refrigerant at an exit. We get low pressure, low temperature, liquid, refrigerant. And our evaporative process, that is our 4 to 1. In this process, what is happening? So, we would say this is the main process in which refrigerant is going to absorb heat energy from a freezing compartment. So, low pressure, low temperature, liquid refrigerant enters into the evaporator. It absorbs heat from a particular area and so liquid refrigerant is converted into vapor form and the cycle is repeated. Now, next topic which we need to see is a comparison between vapor compression system and vapor absorption system. So, the first point is based on which type of technique we have used in this system. So, we would say that in VR, VCRS system, we are going to compress the refrigerant. Okay, so it is written refrigerant vapor is compressed in this system. Whereas in vapor absorption, refrigerant is absorbed and heated. Okay, that is in absorber it is absorbed and in generator it is heated. Next point, mechanical work is supplied to a compressor. So, we know that compressor is a power absorbing device. We are supplying heat, uh, sorry, electricity to a compressor to circulate that working fluid and in vapor absorption system we are actually supplying heat energy to our generator okay so remember this is the main difference okay now high coefficient of performance can be obtained in VCRS system whereas in VRS system the coefficient of performance is quite low now next point four capacity of VCRS system is limited up to thousand turns for a single compressor whereas the capacity for VRS is is more than 1000 tons and because of that this VRS system is used in ice manufacturing industry that is ice plants where we need to generate ice in large amount okay whereas VCRS system is used for a domestic purpose so remember this is the main difference now more noise is produced in VCRS system why because we are using a reciprocating compressor and we know because of a piston motion noise can be created even after providing a suppressor in case of VCRS system whereas VRS system we are using a generator so operation is quiet okay so we can say that it is a quiet operation now sixth point there is a more problem of leakage due to high pressure whereas in VRS system almost there is no problem of leakage now next point seventh one high operating cost now since electricity is consumed we know the units of electricity are much costlier so VCRS system operating cost will be much higher Whereas VRS system, we are just supplying heat energy to a generator, so the co operating cost is quite lesser. Last point, R12 is a suitable refrigerant for a VCRS system. So it is a number for a refrigerant, whereas ammonia is a suitable refrigerant for a VARS system. Why? Because ammonia can be easily absorbed in cold water. Okay guys, so I hope that you are clear with VARS system and difference between both of them. In next session, we will discuss air conditioning system. So, till then, stay tuned and thank you all.